All right, now we're going to talk about dividing a decimal by a decimal. This is kind of a combination of the last two topics. So let's look at this first problem. We have three and six tenths divided by seven tenths. Okay, if you recall in the last lesson, when we divide by a decimal, we need to move that decimal over, okay? Same thing goes here. We move it over and you bring it right up top, right away. So now we have 36 divided by seven. This is a much easier problem to do. So seven doesn't go into three, doesn't go into three, but it does go into 36. And remember, you can't go over. So seven divided, or 36 divided by seven, is going to give us five. Then we take our five times seven, put it down here, five times seven is 35 and we subtract. We get a one, and then right here we can actually put down a zero and bring it down, because remember there's a decimal there. With the decimal there, you can put as many zeros as you want out this way to get an answer. So we bring down our zero. Now we ask ourselves how many times does seven go into 10? And the answer is one time. One times seven is seven. We subtract, and again, we can put another zero, and we can bring it down. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does seven go into 30? Well, seven goes into 30 four times. Give us the answer of 28. At that point, we can kind of stop, because we have an answer of five and 14 hundredths, which is close, uh, to the actual answer. This, this answer actually might go on for a long time, but the whole idea behind this lesson is you move your decimal in the divisor first, and however many times you do that, also do it in your dividend, and bring it right up top so that you don't forget. Let's look at another example. Alright, this one is 17 and 8 tenths divided by 3 and 1 tenth. So again, start our by moving the decimal one place over, making that a 31, and we're making this a 178, bringing that decimal right up to the top. You can add another zero here right away if you'd like. You don't have to. So now we ask ourselves, how many times does 31 go into set one? It doesn't. Does it go into 17? No. Does it go into 178? Yes. Now, if you recall from the previous lesson, we're going to use estimating here. So we're going to round this 31 to 30, and we need a compatible number that's compatible with 3 here that in the 17. And that is 18. So we ask ourselves, how many times does 30 go into 180? All right, we know that the zeros can cancel out, and that's going to give us six times. So we're going to put our six above and then off to the side, you always want to do this, off to the side you're going to do your 31 times six. Okay? Um, so you get an answer that's greater. Alright, so now I must go back and erase my answer and we're going to go with a five here. Okay, so now 31 times five will give us 155. Okay, so we're going to put our 155 here and subtract. And last thing we'll do is bring down our zero. Now notice, right here, we have our decimal still. So anything else we do is going to have a decimal behind. So how many times does 3 go into 23. The answer is 7 times. So we're going to do 31 times 7 off to the side. And we're going to get 217. So we're going to put our 7 above and 217 down here. We're going to subtract and get 19. We can bring down the next zero 
and really you can just keep going however far the problem needs you to take it so in this case we'll go one more step and at that point we'll uh, stop because we went to the nearest hundredth so we already know previously that 31 times 6 is 186 so that'll be perfect for 190 so I'm gonna put my 6 up here and 186 down here so we're gonna get a remainder of 4 and like I said you could go on for a long time but in this case I think we could be okay with the answer of 5 and 76 hundredths so again when dividing a decimal by a decimal the things you need to do are first move the decimal place in the divisor however many times you do that you must move it in the dividend and drag it right up to the top that way you don't forget about it later and then you treat the problem like a normal long division problem